Hey biology students, this video is intended to show you how to use a microscope so that you are going to be prepared for our microscope lab. So, first we need to talk a little bit about some of the essential parts of a microscope. This is called the eyepiece. So the eyepiece is where you're going to look through. If you wear glasses, you can actually take them off when you're looking through the eyepiece. Uh, it can be hard if you wear them, and then uh, you can refocus a little bit when I, I'm going to teach you how to do that. The eyepiece magnifies, just the eyepiece alone, magnifies what you're looking at by 10x, so tenfold. Any object that we look through through here is going to be at least 10 times bigger. Down here, we have what are called the objectives. Important things to know about the objectives, it can be really tempting to grab them by the actual objective lens. Don't do that. These are about $60 a piece, and it can break them. So when you want to rotate the objective, you do it by grabbing this disc here, and you can rotate through the different objectives. The objectives contain lenses which magnify at different powers. So the smallest objective is the 4x objective. That's the one with the red stripe. The 4x objective magnifies whatever you're looking at an additional four times. So if I'm looking through the eyepiece, through the 4x objective, anything I look at is going to be 40 times bigger than it actually is in real life. If I rotate through to the middle objective, which has the yellow stripe, notice I'm using the disc, the middle objective is 10x objective. So the 10x objective magnifies 10 times. So when you're looking through the eyepiece and the 10x objective, anything you look at is going to be 100 times bigger. And then the biggest objective is the 40x objective. So when you're looking through here and the 10x eyepiece, anything you look at is 400 times bigger than it actually is. So this is our biggest objective and it's going to allow us to look at things that are very, very, very tiny. We're going to start on the smallest objective. And by the way, notice that every time I rotate objectives, you have to rotate all the way until it clicks. Click. So we're going to start on the smallest objective there. And when I'm looking at a sample on the small, we always start on the smallest objective whenever we're looking at a sample because we need to find what we're looking at and get it positioned before we get to the bigger objectives. So if you tell me, I can't find it, and I see you're looking at uh, the 10x or the 40x, I'm going to be like, watch the video. So yeah, make sure you always find your sample on the 4x objective. Okay, moving down. This is called the stage. The stage of the microscope is where your slide or whatever you're looking at is going to be positioned. So the stage has these little clips which can hold whatever you're looking at in place. The stage can be raised or lowered by adjusting the focus knob. And so once you have your object in position on the stage, you're going to use the focus knob to bring it in and out of focus. So usually what will happen is you'll find your object on the lowest power and you'll move it around on the stage, move your slide around on the stage to get the object into position. Moving down, on the base of the microscope there is a switch which turns the light on and off. If you notice that you're having a hard time seeing your, micros the, your object and it seems too dark, you can rotate this disc right here. This is called the diffuser, and this can change the kind of light that is coming through into the microscope. So let's get started trying to find an object. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take my slide, and I'm going to put it on the stage. So I'm going to look at an insect leg. I'm going to take my slide and I'm going to put it on the stage, like so. And notice I'm on the 4x power when I put it on. And I'm going to turn on the light. And I'm going to look through, and when I look through I notice it just looks like white. Like I can't really see anything at all. So I'm going to move the slide around on the stage until I see something that I think might be my sample, what I'm trying to find. But it's out of focus. So now I'm going to use the, four, the focus knob so I'm going to change the focus knob until the object's in focus. And again, if you're wearing glasses, you can take them off and you can use the focus knob to adjust for your eyesight. And then, once I've got it in perfect focus and I think it's as clear and sharp as it's going to get, then I switch over to the next highest objective, the 10x lens, the yellow stripe. And now I'm zoomed in a little bit more. 
And at this point, I shouldn't have to change the focus knob. I should have gotten it in focus on the 4x objective, so when I switch to the 10x objective, I only make teeny tiny adjustments. So I shouldn't see you go when you're on the 10x objective. You do big adjustments on the 4x, get it mostly into focus, and then switch to the 10x and make tiny adjustments because it's already mostly in focus. Finally, when it seems like it's totally in focus on the 10x, I switch to my big mama, which I can actually use to look at this slide. So now we see why using the 40x to start with a sample is dangerous. So I get it in focus on the 4x, position it on 4x, move to 10x, and then move all the way up to 40x. And at this point, it should be, again, almost entirely in focus. So when you're making adjustments, you're just barely touching the focus knob. And the reason for this is that if you crank it when you're on the 40x, you can break the slide or damage the objective, as you saw me almost do. Cool. All right. Now when I'm done looking at the slide, what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch it back to 4x, and I'm going to drop it down, and I'm going to pull my slide off. So that's how you look at a prepared slide. Now, some cool stuff you're going to get to do in lab is you're going to get to look at some sample, like some new slides that you make of living organisms, including your own cells. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make what's called a wet mount. So this is when I want to look at something that's alive on the slide. I have to suspend it in a drop of water and then cover it up with a cover slip. So I'm going to have a little beaker of water and a little dropper, and I'm just going to put one little drop boop, of water on my slide. One little drop. And then I'm going to tear off a little bit of a plant. In this case, I'm using a piece of tape. It's OK. You guys are going to have a plant called a lodia, and you're just going to pull off a little leaflet, just one little tiny leaf. And you are going to put it in the drop. And then. It's time to cover it up. You're going to take this tiny little square of glass. This is called a cover slip. So you're going to take a cover slip and put it on top. So when you're done, you should have a sandwich that consists of slide, water and sample, and then a cover slip on the top. And it should be totally flat. And then you'll be able to put that under the microscope, look at it, and focus just as I explained before. So that's a wet mount for the plant cells when we look at the leaf of the plant. The next thing you're going to be able to do is you're going to get a chance to look at human cells. So to look at human cells, we need to take a sample. We're going to take samples from the inside of your cheek. So the first thing we're going to do is get a drop of this little blue dye I call methylene blue, just a teeny bit, we don't need a lot. So methylene blue, just a little drop, really do not need a lot. Just a tiny, tiny, tiny amount. So like that, that that's even like too much, you don't need that much. So then I'm going to take the flat end of a toothpick and I'm going to scrape the inside of my cheek. And then I'm going to dip this in the methylene blue. And I'm going to streak it around to get all the cells that I pulled off of my cheek off of the toothpick. By the way, methylene blue stains DNA. Your cells contain DNA. If you get methylene blue on your hands, your hands will turn blue. And they will stay blue until those cells get washed off. So be very careful with methylene blue. All right. After I've got my skin cells from my cheek streaked on the slide, I'm going to put a cover slip on top. Boop. Cover slip on top, and you should see that the water in the methylene blue will spread out until the cover slip is completely, uh, like there's, there's what, uh, it's spread out to be under the entire surface of the cover slip. And then you're going to focus same as before. So start on 4x. And then zoom in and look around until you see something that you think might be a cell. And this part's going to be kind of hard. You've got to look around for a while to find the cells, and I'll help you find some. 
if you need help. Okay, I think I found some cells here. And so then, now that I've found a cell, I'm going to switch to 10x. Oops, went the wrong way. 10x. Focus a little bit more. Oh, there they are. So cute. Look at my cells. And then I switch to 40x, and I'm going to draw a picture. So that's how you focus uh, on and make a, a slide mount. The next thing you need to know how to do is how to be able to calculate the size of cells. So. When you look through the microscope, you're going to see a circle. And that circle is called your field of view. In the field of view, when you're using the 40x objective, remember 40x plus the 10x eyepiece, this is 400x times bigger. So when we're looking through the field of view, you can only see 0.4 millimeters. That's how wide across this whole circle that you're looking at actually is. To your eyes, it will look like 0.4 times 400x. So it'll look like, you know, it's 1,000, or one, like a, a, a few centimeters across. But it's not actually going to be. It's only going to be 0.4 millimeters that you're looking at. And so what you're going to do, you are going to then figure out, well, then how wide is this cell if this is 0.4 millimeters? So what you're going to do is you're going to count across how many cells can you see. So I can see one two, three, four cells going all the way across this field of view. I see four cells kind of fill up the diameter. The diameter is four cells across. So that means that one cell is one-fourth of this length. Since there's, one, uh, go, since there's four cells going across, this is one-fourth of the diameter. So since I know that this is 0.4 millimeters in total across, I can multiply that by one-fourth to find that this one, this cell right here is probably about 0.1 millimeters big. That's the size of this cell. The same thing is true when you're going to be looking at animal cells. Animal cells, they're going to be uh, a little bit more um, amorphous meaning irregularly shaped, than plant cells. So the animal cells are going to have boundaries that are scraggly and all over the place, and they're going to be really big, and there's not going to be, you're not going to be able to see anything in them. Most of the stuff inside the cells is going to be invisible to you, but you are going to be able to see this dark dot. This is the nucleus of the plant cell, and this is where they store all their DNA. We'll learn a lot more about the nucleus later. The outer boundary that you're going to see is going to be called the cell is called the cell membrane. So this is the edge of the cell that holds all of the contents of the cell inside and together. On the plant cell, you're going to see that there is a cell wall. So the plant cells are actually going to look more like bricks. And this is because plants have an external layer that's basically really, really sturdy and strong, and it holds the plant cells in a regular square shape. So plants have very regular sized cells and they almost look like bricks. So you'll see the outer wall and maybe you'll even see the edge of the membrane inside the cell wall. So plant cells still have a cell membrane, it's just inside the cell wall. I've drawn it here in gold. And then inside the nucleus of the plant cells, since they're alive and we haven't stained their DNA, the nucleus is going to be really light and probably pretty hard to see. But you might be able to see the chloroplasts. So the chloroplasts are what the plant uses to do photosynthesis, and so those are going to be little green um, circles that you'll be able to see inside each of the bricks that is one cell. So that's what you'll probably see when you're looking at the plant cells. And then when you're looking at your own cells with the DNA stained, you'll be able to see the nucleus with the DNA inside, and that's about it.